recent run of nice weather reminded me that launch day wasn't too far off, so I stopped in again at North Atlantic Marine Services in Wareham, Massachusetts to learn how the pros go about commissioning boats for the spring. North Atlantic is an Amtec certified marine technician training facility, but they also store and service boats. We met up with co-owner Steve Lawrence, who began walking us through the commissioning steps for an outboard powered center console. So Steve, we're going to kick things off with shrink wrap removal. Now, I know a lot of guys are probably eager to get their boat in the water for the season. They say, hey, shrink wrap, taking off, how hard could that be? But apparently you want to be careful, right? Absolutely, Tom. What can happen is if you just go at this and ha start hacking and slashing, you can damage a gel coat as well as rub rails, uh, transoms, any kind of uh, handles. Um, it is uh, by no means hard to do, but you really need to take your time, be concerned of what you're cutting and where you're cutting so that you don't do more damage or harm to the boat than uh, needs to be. Okay, well, let's go see how you go about doing it. Steve begins removing the shrink wrap by cutting the straps at the bow of the boat and making small slits up to the gunnel to give him some slack. Carefully pulling the plastic material away from the hull, he works his way methodically around the hull, taking his time so as not to risk scratching the gel coat or rub rail with his razor knife. When removing the straps supporting the shrink wrap, Steve holds the blade of his knife away from the boat so that he won't accidentally damage the hull if his hand slips. Steve takes his time when cutting around the T-top, as accidentally slicing the canvas top or scratching the rod holders could prove costly. You'll notice at this point Steve works from inside the boat as he can easily see what lies behind the shrink wrap and make his cuts away from the boat. Okay, we've got this great big pile of used shrink wrap here, Steve. What do you guys do with this stuff? So what we end up doing is we send this to a recycler. They, uh, they melt it down, they process it again, and it's actually used again. Mm -hmm. um, so it's what, just one of your green efforts that you got that you guys are doing nowadays. Absolutely, Tom. We uh, we have a very uh, a green theme here, and we basically do this with uh, with shrink wrap. We do it with uh, the batteries that we take off. We do it with oils. We do it with the filters, gas filters, even as far down as cardboard is all recycled and, and used again. Next up on the spring commissioning checklist was installing the batteries after they'd been fully charged and load tested. One thing I do want to point out, uh, lock nuts on the batteries. We do not use wing nuts. Wing nuts loosen up and have a tendency to uh, not, tight, not be tight enough. Another Coast Guard regulation is that the positives, positive terminals on the batteries have to be covered. They are. With the batteries installed, we turned our attention to the engine, a 2009 250 horsepower Yamaha 4-stroke. It's important to point out that this particular engine might have different commissioning requirements than other makes and models, so always consult your manual or a certified marine mechanic before starting your engine after storage. This particular point, Tom, is what will remove a couple of covers and expose the engine. Okay, and the reason that we're doing this, a couple of reasons. First, to, to, to take a look and see if there's any kind of uh, rodent infestation. Even though we have <laughs> shrink wrapped this boat, yes, it yeah. sounds kind of funny. No, but I know it happens. They do show up. Um, we've we've had raccoons, we've had mice, <laughs> we've had all kinds of little. Uh, yeah, I'd know. like to. I, I wouldn't like to pop the cowling on your engine and find an angry raccoon in oh, here. Oh, absolutely. So what's, so what's the next step? You've given it sort of a visual inspection. Right. What do you do now? What we're going to do now. Tom is this. We're going to basically lift up the engine, make sure that the power trim is working, set the engine back down, and then apply some uh, water to it and crank the engine over and, and see if right she now? stops. Absolutely. Might as well pull that. Uh, yep. Next, Steve reconnected the leads to the fuel pump. Steve disconnects the pump at the end of each season so that the pump will not run if the engine is accidentally started before the fuel system is primed. Next, we squeeze the priming bulb to force fresh gas into the fuel system. 
When the bulb was hard, the system was primed. A quick check on the oil level and it was time to attach earmuffs for supplying water to the lower unit and a hose to the upper cooling water port. So Steve, how long do you, you usually run the engine? Well, Tom, that all depends. What we do is try to bring these engines up to normal operating temperature. Mm -hmm. On an on a average, I would probably say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Um, one thing that we want to be, make sure of is that during that period, um, the earmuffs stay in place. Mm -hmm. The earmuffs are actually the water pickups that we have, and um, they have a tendency to move, to vibrate, to come undone. Mm -hmm. um, then we can cause all kinds of water pump issues, water pump impeller issues, and engine overheating issues. Right. So it's something you don't want to walk away from and go get a coffee for 10 or 15 minutes until uh, the engine comes up to normal rapid temperature because they do have a tendency to fall off. Yeah, and also if you have kids running around or something like that, you leave the thing for a second, you know that they could come over, knock the hose, play around with it, and oh. then you got a big problem on your hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so true. what happens, Yeah, give me an example of uh, you know something that happens if those earmuffs uh, do slip off. Well, what happens is that the engine, of course, runs out of water. It's, not, it's no longer uh, pumping water through the cooling system. The temperature in the engine spikes very quickly. Mm -hmm. It can also cause a lot of damage to the water pump itself, the impeller itself, mm -hmm. um, creating a, a situation where it basically runs dry, takes out a housing, actually takes out even a, a lower seal in the unit itself that seals the water from the, uh, the oil and the, uh, the gears itself, right. creating a, a, a real uh, very expensive repair yeah. due to the fact that these, this engine ran without water. Not, no mind overheating the power head. Yeah, not a good way to start the season. No. With the earmuffs secured and the cooling water flowing at full pressure, Steve climbed aboard and fired up the engine. After letting the engine run for several minutes, he checked the temperature of the power head at several points with the sensor to make sure it was heating evenly and within the desired range. Okay, Steve, so you brought the engine up to operating temperature and it all everything seems to be looking good, but what are some of the next steps we want to tackle? Well, Tom, what we need to do is take a look at this engine. And what we do is visually give it a, a once-over, making sure that there is no issues with anything leaking, anything dripping, anything, any kind of seepage, mm -hmm. any kind of corrosion. Um, at that point, what we would end up doing is do, the next step would be to a, a, a charging system. Check the alternators. Uh, check the alternators, yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, connections, making sure that everything is tight and not uh, not falling off and secure. Um, a steering system check, we put it in and out of gear to make sure that it is uh, engaging and disengaging. Mm -hmm. And also the spark plugs, right? And spark plugs will yeah. be the final thing that we do. We, uh, I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local. Check in with us in the coming weeks. We'll be back at North Atlantic Marine Services with Steve and his crew, and they're gonna walk us through more commissioning steps. Thanks for watching.